Hey everyone, my name is Paul and today I'm installing LED light bulbs in the instrument cluster of my RAV4. I got these LEDs from Amazon. They come in packs of 10 and these cute little tins. The gauges take four light bulbs and the climate control takes one. I have a few different colors here, so we're gonna try them out and see what they look like. Replacing the dashboard lights doesn't take very many tools. You'll need 10 and 14 millimeter sockets, small pliers, a Phillips screwdriver, and a small flathead. Remove the radio faceplate first. Take out two Phillips head screws under the radio trim bezel. Loosen the plastic dash trim by pulling it toward you, then the radio trim will go straight down. Put your fingers behind the center locking differential, hazard, and defroster switches to push them out. Unplug the three switches and set them down in the same order on the passenger side floor mat. Pull off all four climate control knobs. Put your fingers behind the plastic to release the clips holding the climate control trim. Pull out the AC button and bezel. Remove the rubber ignition switch ring. I arranged the parts neatly on the passenger floor mat to keep them organized. Remove two Phillips head screws from the plastic trim under the steering wheel and pull the panel toward you to release the clips. Pull out the fuse box and take the cable out of the hood release handle. It's a little bit tricky. Remove three bolts from the metal panel with a 10 millimeter socket. Push in the push pin by about three millimeters to release it, then remove the lower vent. Take one Phillips screw out of the lower steering column trim. Wiggle the panel to unsnap it from the upper plastic, but don't remove it. Take out this weird piece of metal covering the steering column bolt. I made a pile of parts in the back seat to keep them organized. Use a small flathead screwdriver to unplug the connector from the brake switch. If you haven't guessed what's happening by now, I'm removing the steering column. I know, I'm not happy about it either but this is the way. Push the lower trim to the side to get the socket on the two upper steering column bolts. I arranged the bolts on the driver's floor mat in the same order I removed them. Bend the plastic a little bit toward you to let the ignition switch slide past it and gently set the steering column down on the floor. Take one Phillips screw out to loosen the dashboard trim, then pull the bottom corners toward you to release the clips. Take out two more screws holding the dash trim panel. Pull the big dashboard trim on the left and right sides to release the clips. Before taking it down, unplug the clock. Move the shifter back and set the dashboard trim on top of it. Four Phillips head screws hold the instrument cluster. I put these screws in the center console cup holder. Pull the gauges out and turn them to the right. Take out four gray light bulb sockets with quarter turn counterclockwise. Leave the one in the middle. That's the low fuel light. These are small incandescent light bulbs with green covers. Pull the light bulbs straight out of their sockets and plug in the new LED bulbs. It doesn't matter which direction you plug them in. LEDs do require the correct polarity, but we'll do that in the next step. Turn the park lights on and make sure the dimmer is turned all the way clockwise for maximum brightness. Insert each light bulb socket into the dashboard. If the light doesn't turn on, flip it around 180 degrees. Make sure you see light coming from each light bulb as you plug it in. If it doesn't work, flip it around. Each plastic socket takes a quarter turn to lock it in place. Turn the lights on and off a couple times to check the bulbs. Make sure all four light up. Now the dashboard is ready to go back in. Reinstall the four Phillips head screws that hold it in place. The climate control is held on by three screws. Pull it out and tip it up. Wiggle the light bulb socket with the blue wires with small pliers to remove it. This is also an incandescent light with a green cover. Pull the light bulb out and replace it with the LED. If the LED doesn't turn on, turn it 180 degrees and plug it in. The light socket just snaps into the climate control. You don't need to turn it. Reinstall three screws into the climate control. Gently set the main dash panel in place, but don't push it in. Plug in the clock. Now you can line up the dash trim and snap in the left and right sides. Pull out the connectors for the three switches above the radio, then reinstall two Phillips head screws under the gauges. 
The dash trim goes in at the top first, then snap the lower corners in place and install one Phillips screw. Lift the steering column up by the wheel and bend the plastic out toward you to let the ignition lock slide past it. Use a coffee mug to support the steering wheel. Push the front steering column bracket onto the studs and thread the two nuts all the way on by hand. Install the left bolt first. It's easier to reach than the right side. Use a socket to spin the bolt on, but don't tighten it yet. Push the trim out of the way and thread in the right side bolt using a socket with an extension. Make sure the steering column is straight and tighten the bolt. Remember to tighten the left side bolt and the two nuts holding the steering column. Plug in the brake switch. Reinstall the weird metal bracket covering the left steering column bolt and use a 10mm socket to tighten it. Push the lower column trim up to snap it together with the upper piece and reinstall the small Phillips head bolt. The plastic vent duct goes in next. Install the right side first, then the left. The push pin starts with the pin sticking out and is locked when you push the pin flat. This metal panel can hang from the little hook above the middle bolt. Install all three bolts with your fingers first, then go back and tighten them with a 10mm socket. Snap the fuse box back into the lower plastic trim, then reinstall the hood release cable back into the handle. The lower plastic is held on by four snaps. The upper right corner slides under the trim by the ignition switch. Install two screws at the bottom of the plastic trim. From left to right, plug in the center locking differential, hazard flasher, and defroster switches, then push them into the dashboard. Reinstall the climate control trim bezel and push it straight in to snap it in. Push the AC button into place, then install the knobs. Are they knobs? I feel like knobs are round. Install the rubber ring around the ignition switch with the cutout slot facing up. Pull the lower right corner of the plastic toward you so the top part of the radio trim can fit under it. Install the last two screws and the radio faceplate. That's it. Now let's see how it looks. The old incandescent lights work perfectly with the dimmer and give off a light green color. The climate control has a green tint, but the blue and red show up fine. With white LEDs, the dimmer still works, but there isn't as much range between dim and bright. At full brightness, they are twice as bright as the old lights. The gauges are a lighter green than before, and the climate control has a clean white in the middle with red and blue looking great. I also tried the dark blue LEDs. Even at full brightness, they are dimmer than the old incandescent lights. The climate control doesn't look right, with red not showing at all. If you want blue, you should go with the lighter ice blue LEDs. The green LEDs are a darker green than original and go brighter than the old lights do. The climate control looks a little funny because the blue doesn't show up. I installed the green LEDs in the gauges and a white LED in the climate control. The green looks great and the red and blue for heat and AC show up correctly too. And finally, let's set the radio colors to green to match the dash. That looks nice. Okay, what did we learn today? Taking the gauges out of the RAV4 is a bit tricky, but if you follow the steps in exactly the same order as I did them, you won't have a problem. These LEDs are available in white, dark blue, light blue, purple, red, and green. What color would you choose for your car? Leave a comment below.